Hi there, welcome to this course on creating and managing virtual private cloud and other network components on AWS. My name is Harshit and I'm instructor for this class. In this course, you're going to learn about various network components on Amazon Web Services. You will learn to create and manage AWS VPC and various network components on VPC dashboard. VPC is an important uh, service on the cloud and it is also an important component of the AWS certification exams. So either if you are preparing for AWS certifications or looking to learn how to manage various network components and create a virtual private cloud on AWS, this course will be useful for you. So here uh, you will learn to create a VPC. You will also learn to create and manage various subnets, uh, subnetworks. And you will also learn to attach and detach internet gateway to your VPC. Later on, you will learn to create and customize a route table. And you will also learn to manage route table and other gateways and much more and various other network components. So if you are curious to learn this networking and VPC skills on AWS cloud, start learning right now. See you in the class. Hey friend, welcome to this lesson. We are going to learn about various kinds of networking services on Amazon Web Services. So let's start with this. So this is a AWS Web Console where you can navigate to the services panel to see through various services. So here in this lesson, we are going to explore various kinds of VPC services on the VPC dashboard, virtual private cloud. So when you scroll down over the services panel, you got uh, networking and CDN, content delivery network services. So here you got various kind of services and let's start with VPC. VPC or virtual private cloud is one of the most important uh, service on AWS that's widely used. So on the right hand side, you can see there are various cloud regions and you can deploy your VPC anywhere in any region on the cloud. Okay, so VPC is one of the core services that is very important if you look for AWS service uh, certification exams such as Solution Architect, uh, Cloud Practitioner and other exams. So it is one of the crucial things. So if you are going to deploy your real life applications on the cloud, uh, networking must be on your mind. Even if you are not a networking professional, you must be aware of a few of these things. Okay, so when you are using an EC2 service or other services, you would require this thing. So don't panic. Uh, let us. Do, we are going to just explore various services here uh, that you can do with the VPC dashboard, such as subnets, route table, internet gateways, and other things here. So VPC allow you to manage uh, various networking. Uh, entities together on a single dashboard so it can be easily managed without any much effort uh, if you have a background in networking and you're working in an organization that requires cloud as a networking implementation you could do a lot of things here okay so for any reason you can explore so there are a lot of options here uh, if you're a security professional if you're looking for a security role, uh, you could harness various kinds of networking implementations. You can control where and how your traffic flows to your web application on the cloud. You can control each and everything. You can always monitor it. If you want to go in depth, you can choose CloudWatch or other services. So here, let's take uh, the existing VPC. So when you create an AWS account, you by default get a default VPC. Uh, this is the default one and you can always create multiple VPC. So VPCs are generally charge free until they are connected to any other AWS services. So you can create a large amount of VPCs on the cloud. And here in the VPC, we got multiple subnets and here we got uh, six different subnet groups and you can customize each one of them. Here are various actions that you can perform. If you select any subnet, you will find all the details here such as ARN, Amazon resource name, the subnet ID, that can be used to link. ARN is a very important thing if you are using a command line interface 
or you want to integrate this service to any other service you can use it or creating some uh, application so here uh, you are going to learn these things and these are the route tables and other things that you can customize here so AWS allows you to uh, visually manage everything that goes on the backend and you can visualize how your backend implementation would work how your network things will look like you can customize each subnet by going to the uh, actions or you can always create a new subnet so you can create a routing table how your traffic will be routed and you can create a internet gateways how it will be connected and you can have dscp client uh, elastic ips you can have static ips as well you can have endpoints you have managed prefix and different things here so if you want to create something here you can analyze um, something you can run reachability analysis and different kind of testing as well so uh, if you already know a lot of networking concept uh, you would you just need to uh, go through various services find various options and you will be easy to implement these things and otherwise just stay focused on what you want to do don't uh, if you are not sure about what uh, settings you should do uh, just go with the default in here okay so when you create a vpc uh, a respective subnet will all uh, automatically be created so you do not need to uh, create a subnet uh, alone and even if you want to customize it you can always add on or revert back to the default settings and if you're sure you can always customize everything otherwise just go with the default so here if you want to edit the inbound rules you can go these things you got various kind of options here you can select all traffic or custom tcps uh, icmp clients secure shells telnet different protocols you can customize you can also define your own custom protocol and customize this thing you can provide the source ip address the you can either decide whether to block this kind of traffic or allow so if you have some kind of list although you can implement these kind of things in the security services as well using aws firewall and other things but if you want to control this thing to the networking level using inbound rules or these things you can customize this thing so aws uh, sometimes allow you to have multi layer of security models so it is better when you are implementing a security things on the cloud even if you are secure if you are not a security professional security must be your concern if you are a solution architect if you are a network engineer or anyone uh, you should design a system that is robust enough to uh, handle a lot of uh, things messy things around so go through these things it will be very useful and also if you are uh, setting for the examinations aws examinations there is no shortcut you have to just explore various services find various options and test it how it works this will be a practical knowledge that would be more reliable in your job profile as well as certification exams here you can also customize outbound rules you can set it to default and otherwise just move on so once you create a vpn you based on the region you can customize this thing in the coming lessons you will be learning about uh, how to create a vpn subnets route tables internet gateways how to connect with the ec2 and other things so this is how you can also connect with a network firewall and other things so just explore vpc dashboard and other networking services dive deep into various concepts and it can be used for security as well as other professions keep learning and keep moving ahead Hi, welcome back friends here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating a virtual private cloud or VPC on AWS. So let's start with this. As you can see here we have logged into the AWS console and launched our VPC service. So once you log into it you will find this dashboard. On the left hand side you got various options where you can create your own VPC, subnet, route table and much more. So just go to the VPC options and here you can see we have one default vpc enabled that is there available once you create an aws account and it is by default 
next we can create multiple vpcs and just go to create vpc to create a new one and you can use it for various kinds of aws services on the cloud so as the name suggests it is a virtual private cloud so you define your own networking specifications and will recreate it your vpc will have a different subnet and other options as well and here it, we just need to provide a name for it uh, just provide some name and uh, just give it a name it infra uh, we are providing next we need to define two different ip cidr blocks for ip version 4 uh, we can provide some block here i'm using 10.0.0.0 slash 60 and next for ip version 6 you got three different options either you can go with a no option no no cidr block it will directly move all the traffic to ip version 4 or you can use the amazon provided block or you can provide your own block as well in your case uh, you have to identify the pool you have to define it or or you can also enable different things you can go with the tenancy uh, the default tenancy is suggested otherwise you can customize as well next you got uh, tags if you want to create it will automatically created by the name so tags are useful once you create different IAM roles and you connect with different users it would be easily identifiable say if you have multiple VPCs on there and you get confused you can locate them with the tags otherwise just leave it where it falls and create a VPC so this is how you create a VPC in few simple steps next we can configure a lot of settings networking configurations here in detail uh, you can find most useful information the vpc id uh, and different settings the dhcp options uh, you can check the cidrs the flow logs you can create a flow log on itself you can create various things here you got various options you can enable the filter to accept or reject various kinds of traffic or you can have the maximum aggregation interval defined you can add uh, various things destination for log details you can select a log group to go to glue crawler glue crawler well, aws glue is a powerful service which automatically takes a lot of things and if you provide the glue crawler it will fetch the log information otherwise you can go to the cloud watch or configure cloud trail settings uh, next you got to define s3 bucket for ARN uh, where information could be stored uh, so what is s3 s3 is simple storage service on AWS it's a simple block storage that provides a bucket just to navigate here you can create a lot of bucket bucket is like a like folder where you upload files and it will be uniquely identifiable you have to just copy the ARN of your bucket that you want to add here uh, ARN for Amazon resource name uh, this is a unique ID given to each instance or service created on the cloud for various kind of services even the VPN have its own ARN if you want to connect a VPN to EC2 you have to provide the ARN and we have provided the S3 ARN here so it will be automatically identified with this uniquely S3 bucket and next hit create if you want to create these things and this is how uh, we create a VPC connected to S3 and other services. You can go to the actions and you will find various options. You can edit the DHCP option setting, dynamic host control protocol and different kind of things here. Uh, various network parameters are set there. And once you go to the VPCs, you got here two VPCs created. The first one that has no name is the default VPC. And second one is the VPC that we created right now. You can manage more network settings here, uh, but leave it for now. Here uh, we got this same information here. So on AWS, uh, it is easy to create a VPC, and you can always connect it to a, a different kind of services across different regions of the globe. So try to create your own VPC uh, on AWS. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. You are going to learn more in the coming lessons. Hi, welcome back friends here in this lesson. You are going to learn about creating a subnet on AWS. 
So let's start with this. So this is our VPC dashboard where you can configure various networking things. And after we have created a VPC, next step is to create a subnet. So what is a subnet? Subnet is a logical subdivision of an IP address. So once you create an IP address, you got one IP address and you can divide this single IP address into multiple networks that is called as a subnet. So here we can create a subnet, just go to the subnets and here by default we got six different subnets created and just go to the right hand side, top right to create a new subnet if you want to create. So you have to provide the name of the VPC that you want to connect. Uh, you can go with the default one or one that we created later on. So we have used the new VPC and it automatically fetches the associated VPC CIDRs that we have defined in the VPC. Next, you need to provide some subnet settings. First, let's start with create, providing a name for the subnet. Just write any name. We will be using the same name, infrastructure, uh, IT infra, and we use this subnet, we will prefix it. Next, we need to define the region where this will be available. We take the US East Virginia region and you can provide this thing. Next, you have to define IP version 4 CIDR block that you want to use. It's slash 0, it's slash 8, 16, 24 or a different option. You, there are various custom options you can choose from them. Next, you can provide various kinds of tags but this is an optional thing uh, you can leave it you can create multiple subnets from the same dashboard you can add different subnets just provide the name for the second subnet if you want to create or leave it leave it as it is if you want to create one subnet just provide details for the one if you want to create multiple subnets you can create at once and also you can go to the dashboard and create one by one so subnets are important part on the VPC to handle different kind of requests on the cloud. It works in the same way that other applications are deployed on the server, be it on-premise or the cloud, networking is there everywhere. So you want to have better control. With the help of cloud, you easily get control of all the properties at one place. So creating a VPC on AWS is a uh, not that much difficult to apply because all the networking physical infrastructure is handled by the AWS cloud and you are just a controller here so you have to provide this thing you can choose the appropriate block if it, there's some error it will show you the error or alert or otherwise just try to rectify it. Uh, the possibility of uh, an error is generally because there is a mismatch between the uh, CIDR that you define in the VPC and the subnets that you create. So it is automatically connected to the VPC so it must follow the protocol or uh, the format that is defined on the VPC. And later on after creating subnets you can create routing table, you can have the internet gateway and other things configured right there. So here it is. We have used 10.0.0.0 slash 24. So it is here and you can go with the create subnet. Once uh, you have defined it is being created. So this is the custom subnet that we created on AWS. You can create multiple subnets. So for our new VPC we have one subnet. All other subnets was for the default VPC that comes created with the AWS. And here we can create our own subnets. So creating a subnet is not that difficult process. It's easy. But if you are a network professional, you can customize various properties according to your organizations or infrastructure requirements. So here on the downward side, you got various options for route table, network access control list, CIDRs, and different options you got the subnet ARN that you can connect with various kinds of cloud instances whenever you require it to connect just the way we connected the s3 bucket uh, in the creating a VPC session and here you can use this thing 
you can go to the subnet option on the virtual private cloud dashboard to identify various subnets and you can go into details of each subnet and customize it later on try to create various subnets and vpc on aws keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating and attaching the internet gateway to your virtual private cloud on aws so let's start with this so we have created a vpc and created various subnet for it and next step is to attach an internet gateway so that you can allow you to access it access your vpc across the internet so let's do it so just go to the internet gateway option right below the route tables and here we have one default internet gateway and it has been set to the default vpc uh, that's been created with the aws account so we can either customize it or create a new internet gateway from scratch you can create multiple internet gateways and attach them to different vpcs here you are going to learn these things so just click on creating an internet gateway and this is an option to create a gateway so first you need to provide the name of this new gateway uh, just provide any name here let's name it vpc underscore it infrastructure uh, you could provide any custom name as you like just keep the name of your internet gateway subnet and vpc little bit common so that if you have multiple of such uh, network components you may get confused which subnet or internet gateway is related to uh, what VPC or so on. So I am using the same notation here. Next step is to select your VPC uh, internet gateway and go to actions and attach to a VPC. So we have created a internet gateway and we have to attach it. So here you have to select from the available VPCs and just select this thing. Uh, and next step is to select the platform that you want to connect. It is just like a backend server. Uh, I'm using the Linux. You can go with a, a Windows version or other Linux distro. It's your choice. Uh, you can check it. Here's uh, Unix, Windows, and this Linux. Uh, this will be used to access your VPC or other network components through a command line. And here you got a desktop applications that you can access. Currently, we are using the console, AWS console and you can use the CLI or PowerShell to access it. Next, uh, it is connected when you are done, you can attach and more after you have attached a VPC, you can also detach it the same way you go to actions. You can find the details. You can detach it from a VPC. Uh, let's go to the details. And here we got some information about this VPC. We got the VPC ID, uh, the gateway ID, and we can use it just try to detach and once you're sure you can detach so it's easy to attach an internet gateway but it's an important step uh, before making your vpc accessible through internet so if you have an organization that have some applications that require to be deployed on a vpc first create a vpc then add, add some subnets and then you can create internet gateway, route tables and much more. So these are the network components. Try creating various network components on your own. Create an internet gateway and attach it to VPC. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hey, welcome back friend here. In this lesson you're going to learn about creating a route table on AWS. So let's start with this. So what is a route table? A route table consists of a set of rules that are used to determine where your network traffic from your subnet or internet gateway is directed to. You can, uh, it simply tell the network packets which way they need to go in order to get their destination. So you can uh, edit various properties of a route table or you can create your own route table as well. So here you can edit a, a subnet association this way. Just select the subnet association and if you want to save it, you can save or you can edit next uh, we have got some details of this route table that we have earlier created and you can go to the route propagation or different option so for now we are going to create a new route table 
we already have two but we are going to create one more so just go to create new root table and provide the name for this information just name it say i'm using vpc it root and then we need to provide the name of the vpc that we want to connect so we have two vpcs one is default with the aws and then second one we created so we have attached this road table information to the vpc and if you want to create some tags you can add some tags to maintain the role otherwise just leave it by default it will have the default name of the vpc and just hit create route table once you are done next you can find the details of this route table as below you got various options to handle you got subnet associations that you can edit you can add some informations you can find the edge configurations or road propagation on tax so here we got uh, three different route tables configured the first one is connected to the vpc that we have created right right now and second and third if you want to customize anything just go to action and edit route propagation this way you got some information if you want to edit Otherwise, just go to actions and edit subnet association. So if you want to add attach a subnet, you may select or change it association this way. So this is how you create a route table and manage it. You can attach it to subnet or you can edit various propagation properties in here. So try to create various network components on AWS network interface or VPC. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. hey welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about customizing a route table and other network components in aws vpc so let's start with this so we have three different route tables configured here uh, the first one we have created a vpc it route just go to the actions and edit subnet associations so here we have this subnet information here uh, it has an ip version 4 cidr and the subnet id uh, just check it and hit save so this way it is connected and next we can go to a different settings and here uh, we got uh, the first one the route table that we have created we have attached it to the vpc that we created earlier on so first step is to create a vpc then subnet then if you want to add a route table you can create a route table for your own virtual private cloud and here uh, we have other options if you go to the actions you find different options that you can use to customize things such as editing the route you can provide a customer custom destination by default the destination was 10.0.0.0/16 and you can define the target so here we have defined a target as internet gateway and provided it id so we have created an internet gateway and we want to edit it and we have saved it so this is the target where your request has to be provide passed on uh, you can choose from carrier gateway load balancer endpoint local and nat gateways as well network address translation gateway uh, you can also customize network interface and transit gateways as well if you go to the internet gateway you will find some details here we have created one internet gateway and attached it to this route table when you go to the vpc dashboard you can easily find the resources that are used by various regions you can have all the informations about vpc subnets nat gateways and everything that has been configured regarding the network components here on the left hand side you got multiple options uh, and if you want to go into detail you can just check them out uh, like carrier gateways a dhcp option set so this is dynamic host control protocol and you can create an option set for dhcp uh, you can just go to the create you can provide a domain name servers ntp servers and a different servers if you're not a network professional and you're confused what to do just uh, keep it default and just uh, focus on creating a vpc subnet route table and internet gateway that would be sufficient for you 
Then if you want to have an elastic IP address, you can allocate them and provide it uh, to the VPC console. Then you can have the managed prefix list. You have these two informations are there. We already have two different prefix lists. Just keep it uh, by default. You can go to the NAT gateways, network address translations. And if you want to create a NAT gateway, you can have it. You can easily create a highly available NAT gateway. Um, and you can provide the connectivity type, public or private. If you want it to be accessible from the public internet, you can or if you want to host it all privately, you can. You can also add an elastic IP to your NAT gateways that will be connected to your VPC. And then you have other options as well. So you can go to the VPC dashboard to have a view of what components has been created. You can also manage the network ACS, access control list, and much more. If you want to check resource counts per region, you can go to the EC2 option right below the VPC and you can find various network components that has been used across various regions. So if you have a wide, audi a wide audience or big organization that has multiple VPCs spanning across different regions, you can handle them in this way by using the EC2 global view just before the uh, VPC dashboard option. So this is how you configure various networking components using VPC console on AWS. Try to create various network components on AWS. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friends. Here in this lesson you are going to learn about Amazon S3 file transfer acceleration. So let's start with this. Uh, so this is the home page for S3 transfer acceleration where you can check is speed and compare them across various AWS regions. So here you can see there are a lot of regions for AWS spread across the world from Frankfurt, San Francisco to Virginia to Mumbai to Sydney to Sao Paulo to Seoul to Dublin and various places across all the continent except Antarctica. Uh, this is available. So uh, what is the use of transfer acceleration? So it could be used for migrating applications across the globe uh, where you can compare the transfer rate for various regions. Okay, so here we have uploaded file to Virginia and this will com compare the upload speed in other regions with respect to Virginia. So here you can find the San Francisco is fast and it will take some time to check the speed. So San Francisco is 24% faster than Virginia if you try to upload and transfer files across the globe. And uh, Oregon, let us check it. Uh, it will check one by one. So how you can access this service? Uh, you can go to Amazon uh, console and there you can find S3 service. Uh, it's a simple storage service where all the uh, data is stored in form of buckets. It's an object storage. It is very easily used. Most of you might be already familiar with S3. So with the S3, you got this option to check this speed or enable the file acceleration. So you can use three different methods, either S3 console or AWS CLI, or you can use AWS SDKs to harness this thing. So why you want to use S3 transfer acceleration? It's simple. Uh, say just imagine you got an application that is deployed on the cloud be it web application mobile application IOT or anything else and You want to uh, you have a lot of users and everyone is uploading some files So there could be scenarios that you want to uh, Transfer those files to a centralized location maybe for processing and other things say your users are across the world from India to Europe to Americas and you want to process them uh, everywhere everything in Brazil uh, so you can migrate them into a centralized location so you can decide a better plan the way to route this traffic and at which location if you transfer the file it will be optimal so your users may upload a file to a centralized bucket from all over the blood uh, all over the world so you may be able to choose which location to have it uh, that is faster and will connect it to other regions of the world. 
you may transfer i uh, say uh, it could be feasible say if you 80% of your audience are residing in european countries so you can choose a location that is closer to europe with fast speed and low cost so this way your website performance could improve as well as your cost will reduce on the cloud you may transfer gigabytes or terabytes of information on the regular basis across different continents and you can use uh, save the bandwidth for internet connection as well as uh, uh, save the time loading time for a web page and it could be used for migrating various resources as well across different locations so this is a comparison and here we can say that uh, the mumbai region is, is slower as compared to virginia ohio is 80 18% faster canada central is 31 faster and other regions are way so you can compare these things and use it in real life it will change from time to time so for now some regions could be slower some regions could be faster it is variable based on the time and the delay sometimes some shares are not available uh, due to different climatic conditions as well so cloud is affected across the geographies and it's better to save your file across different shares or across the globe if you are uh, if your data is very crucial so try to do this thing implement in s3 keep learning and keep moving ahead